está con yo. Hello, Jesus, on the main line. Cause I'm in need of change now. He said, Help her on the rain down. So I said, Help her on the rain down. Wash away my sins. Cleanse me from within. Lord, I give you everything. Sin self proclaimed us. But his blood it covers us and I. Stuck on your Jesus is the glue between me and you. Jesus is the glue between me and you. Sin separated, but His blood it covers us now. I'm stuck on your. Hello, Jesus, on the main line. Cause I'm in need of change now. He said, Help her on the rain down. So I said, Help her on the rain down. Wash away my sins. Cleanse me from within. Lord, I give you everything. Sin self proclaimed us. But his blood it covers us On your Jesus is the glue between me and you. Jesus is the glue between me and you. Sin separated, but His blood it covers us now. I'm stuck on your. Hello, Jesus, on the main line. Cause I'm in need of change now. He said, Help her on the rain down. So I said, Help her on the rain down. Wash away my sins. Cleanse me from within. Lord, I give you everything. Sin self proclaimed us, but his blood it covers us now. Oh, I'm stuck on your Jesus is the glue between me and you. Jesus is the glue between me.
praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Can you just give God the glory, the honor, and the praise? We are grateful and thankful for this Sunday morning that we worship and we lift up the name of our Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and we're grateful and thankful for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We give him honor and praise, and we lift him up as we tell you on every Sunday, right where you are, your room, your living room, your bedroom, the place where you are listening to me right now and watching online. I want you to, if you will, just lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Can we just bless him for his goodness, for his mercy? Thank the Lord for protecting us from unseen and unseen danger. All of us can testify today that the Lord has been good to us. He has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And as David echoed in the book of Psalms, that everything that hath breath, praise ye the name of the Lord. That's right, where you are, just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. We give him the glory and the honor. Bless the name of our Lord. We do. Give honor to the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God, our heavenly Father, to his only begotten Son, Jesus, to Christ, to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our keeper, and our guide. We're grateful and thankful to our uh, First Lady, Reverend Dr. Sarah Priester, and we give God the praise that we are able to worship the Lord together. Uh, we do apologize for last Sunday that we were not able to have online worship. We were here ready and prepared, uh, but due to unforeseen circumstances, the weather on that Saturday night knocked out our server and we were not able to have online worship, but we are prepared today. We are proactive. Bless the name of the Lord. Never know what might occur. And we need to continue to preach the word of God because the Lord already told us that these things, this pandemic and things that are happening in the world will be, he says, but the word of God must be preached. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to prepare your hearts as our first lady, Reverend Dr. Sarah Priester, shall come forth with the reading of God's word and she shall take us to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to read in your hearing for our communion sermon. We're going to read the scripture coming from Luke. And it reads, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? Where shall I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room finished. There make ready. And when they went, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread, he gave thanks, he brake it, and he gave unto them, saying, This is my body, 
which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the service on this morning. We ask now that you would receive everything we are saying and doing here as worship unto you. We pray for those that are out in listening land, that you would meet them at the level of their deepest needs as the word of God is going forth. We pray now, O oh God, that you will send liberation, you will send answers, and you would be what they stand in need of. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you begin to minister. We ask now, O oh God, that there will be a free flow and that by the end of the service that there will be a rejoicing because there was the word and one word can change our lives. So right now we make ourselves ready in this time of celebration, in this time of communing, in this time of receiving your word. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to move from heart to heart. We ask that we would be empowered by the word of God. We're asking right now that there will be a change, that we will come unto repentance, that we, oh God, will be who you're looking for in this last and evil day. So we offer the service to you. We ask that you bless it. Oh God, we ask that you will sanctify it and let it be a time of rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us continue to pray for the healing of our nation and for our land in the midst of all that has taken place, uh, the death of George Floyd. Uh, we still see how the Lord has allowed his death uh, to cause uh, not only black but whites to come together uh, to fight against hatred and what divides us and what separates us. And just even want to commend all of the participants and all of the people uh, who began to bombard that we want the statues of Robert Lee and the things that represents division to come down and even the streets are going to be changed um, uh, in our own place where we live, our community of Orangeburg. So we just give God the praise for the progress that we have made even in Orangeburg, South Carolina. May God continue to bless us and may the spirit of unity and love uh, flow by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We must continue to pray 
The Lord says that we should always pray, not faint, and not give up. We know that uh, without faith without works is dead. There are works that we can do under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit that we are seeing. And we pray that God will continue to protect uh, the protesters and those who are continuing to, to demonstrate uh, that we must come together in the spirit of unity. And it's not by might. It's not by power, but it has to be by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, let me say to them, this morning is communion Sunday. We're grateful and thankful for all of the deacons who came out uh, from three to five. And we're grateful and thankful for those who came out to pick up your communion. Listen, we are making it available for you. It is your responsibility to come out, get your communion reciprocals. Jesus says as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. We may not be able to take communion uh, physically together but we can still take communion online together. You may, I may not be able to see you. You might not be able to see everybody else, uh, but the Lord knows what we do in secret, and he knows our hearts. So we want to uh, continue to stand upon the word that he says as often as we do this. We are remembering his body that was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. We're remembering his blood without the shedding of blood. Uh, we, our sins cannot be forgiven. So uh, a little later, we will prepare so that we can take communion together. It is offering time. Let me say we're grateful and thankful for all of you uh, who have continued to pay your tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Uh, for we know that his word says that we are to give of our tithes and offerings, that there will be meat in his house. And therefore, he says that he will open up the windows of heaven, pours out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive it. And he also promised to rebuke the devourer for our sake. So we commend all of you. May God continue to bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Bless the name of the Lord. This time, we want to prepare that right where you are, if you would stand as we shall now read our tithes and offering covenant together. Ready? Let us read. Lord God, as I bring my tithes and offerings to the storehouse, you have promised to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive it. Lord, I accept your promise. I also accept your promise to rebuke the devourer for my sake. And I stand on the word that declares all nations shall call me blessed, so I present my tithes and my offerings unto you. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would receive the offering of every person who shall give online or who shall bring their offerings to the church. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would move in their lives, for you said in your word that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we decree and declare a thousandfold blessing upon every giver, O oh God, that sows into this ground that you have ordained and anointed to be good ground. O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, for you said give and it will be given back to them. Good measures pressed down, shaken together and running over. We decree it and declare it over their lives in Jesus' precious, holy, righteous name. Let us all say amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Let me say that a couple of chains have been broken within the St. Paul Baptist Church family. Uh, many of you have already heard of the passing of Thomas Morrison III. You know him as Sanctified Soldier. Uh, he has gone on to be with the Lord. It was a sudden death. Uh, we want to continue to pray for his wife, Tanya Morrison, to the entire uh, Morrison family, that God will give them the strength uh, that they need in this uh, time. We do know that God is too wise to make a mistake and too just uh, to do wrong. And we also uh, lost uh, one of our dear sisters who served as an usher when she was physically able. Uh, she has gone on to be with the Lord, none other than Sister Emma Perryman. Sister Emma Perryman uh, has gone on to be with the Lord, uh, received a phone call from her daughter on this past Friday. Uh, so stay tuned through the newspapers uh, for uh, arrangements uh, concerning Emma Perryman. Let us continue to pray uh, for our church family and to pray for, that God would continue to give strength uh, to those who are grieving. For the Bible says, bless are they that mourn, for they shall 
be comforted. Listen, uh, be, due to the fact of the storms and our internet, uh, we wanted to prepare and be proactive so that we'll make sure that the word can be preached to the members of the St. Paul Baptist Church and to all of those who tune in uh, to hear what thus said the Lord. Uh, so there is a word that shall be preached that is previously recorded during the month of March. Uh, it was a message that the Lord gave me entitled, Let My People Go, uh, that is found in the book of Exodus chapter 5. And after you shall hear this word, I know it's going to bless your life, then we will come back as we shall to partake in our communion and we have uh, two more announcements may god bless you enjoy this word as we begin this morning uh it's imperative that we understand the hebrew language because within the hebrew language translation that we have now with the bible new, old testament being hebrew new testament being greek but with the hebrew language uh when we look at the alphabetical alphabets of the Hebrew uh, there are 22 Hebrew letters and you can't really see that but when we look on the right side of Jerusalem that they write and read from the right to the left on the left side of Jerusalem we read and write from the left to the right which means that Jerusalem is in the center point everything points back to Jerusalem for it is the headquarters it is the covenant land and so therefore when we look at the different letters uh, that is not just the letters of of our regular alphabet you have a B C D E F G but when you notice from the Hebrew alphabet that there are three different values of it you have the phonic sound, you have the numerical value, and you have the prophetic picture. It's very important that we understand this because when God speaks, he speaks to us that from sound, he speaks from us from a numerological standpoint and from the prophetic. When we notice that from 57, uh, 70, the decades that we were in from 70 to 79, if you can look in the center, one, two, three, four, iron. Iron, which means to see. And so therefore, there was a time of revelation, God revealing. It means to expose what was hidden in the dark to the light. That's the reason why that you turn on the news and you see many people, celebrities, will not call names, who were exposed. Many of them are doing time now. Even 45 was exposed. Because whatever's done in the dark comes to the light. So when we move from 70, seeing which means revelation, that which is revealed. Work with me now, because this is for you. 80 on this chart is P-A-Y, but the actual chart is P-E-Y, which is Peh. Peh is the Hebrew letter, thank you so much, for 80. It is 5780. So therefore, it is a picture of the mouth. In other words, we are discerning from iron revealed what to say, what to speak. In other words, it's the mouth. When we talk about the mouth, the mouth is crucial and critical to all of us, especially as believers. Because the God that we serve and whom we worship is a speaking God. He speaks things into existence. We understand that when we begin to look at uh, scripture, the Bible tells us, uh, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
So things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That your God, our God, whom we serve, speaks it and it manifests. Let there be. And then as a result of what he spoke into existence, he takes inventory of it and says good. We understand this because it says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word. The word which God spoke is actually Jesus. That creator that brings it into manifestation. It's not going to go on the screen now, but let me just quote it to you. When you read in gospel according to John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, In the same was the beginning, the Word of God. So therefore, when we understand that the Word of God is powerful, Psalm chapter 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. In Psalms 33, verse 9, it says, For he spoke, and it came to pass. It came to be. He commanded it, and it stood forth. So then we understand that what God says manifests. I'm going to say that one more time. What God says manifests. That's the reason why he cannot lie. If he says that this is blue and red, it turns blue and red. So therefore, we understand that what God says, it manifests. That's the reason why when we talk about God's word, he is accountable to what he says. What God says, it has to happen. And God selects whom he wants to use in order for his word to come to fruition. On the earth realm, God needs humanity. He's divinity, the celestial, but he needs the telestial on the earth realm that he works through. You understand that when God wanted man to be a tabernacle in flesh, he called Adam. But in every relationship with God, there's a level of obedience. Because you can't walk with him if you don't listen to him. And when you, the way you serve him is based upon your obedience to him. Just, we just dancing a little bit. It's going to get good in a minute. Check this. So then watch this. We understand the fact that what he says, it manifests. For God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. What he has spoken, he shall do it. What he has said, it shall come to pass. So therefore, because God is a speaking God, and because God uses people, we understand that Adam sinned, God spoke, there's a seed coming from a woman. And this seed is going to restore Jesus, man, back to fellowship with God. So God will have to raise up people whom he called in order for his word to manifest. God calls Abraham out of a paganistic place, appears to him, shows up to him, and tells him that I'm going to bless you. He says, in you all families of the earth is going to be blessed. I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse those that curse you. He says that you are going to be blessed. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. And based upon that, he says that your seed is going to increase. It's going to multiply. But this is the thing. God promised the blessing, but he also promise of what they would have to deal with in order for it to come to pass. So therefore when we understand that when God was speaking to Abraham and when he was talking to him as we look at the book of Genesis chapter 15 as you put it on the screen uh, there's something that the Lord spoke to him when he allowed him to go to sleep. He speaks to him in a vision and he says Abram know of surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. 
He tells them for 400 years, there's going to be an affliction. For 400 years, they're going to be enslaved. For 400 years, they are going to be in captivity. But watch this. He also goes on to say, and also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And he says, after I finish judging them, he says, they shall come out with great substance. In other words, he says, I'm going to allow the affliction. I'm going to allow the trouble. I'm going to allow the heartache. I'm going to allow the pain. But when I bring them out, I am going to bless them. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. This is key that you begin to understand this of what God says and what God speaks and what God wants to bring into fruition because this is the word in which he had given and which he had spoken that I'm going to allow the affliction. I'm going to bring them out with great substance. You understand the story as we move into the book of Exodus. We understand that what God spoken had manifest. When we look at chapter one, it says there was a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Joseph whom God had elevated and allowed the, the people 70 to move in and to Egypt because God had promoted him, elevated him there wanted them to be in Egypt because what God has spoken, God was going to bring to pass. God had multiplied them and blessed them so that the Pharaoh who knew not who Joseph was, he has a meeting and he says that we must do something to stop them because there's something about these Hebrew women that are strong and they are having babies quicker than any of the Egyptians. He has a private meeting trying to demise the people of God, not knowing that God had already spoken that hundreds of years earlier or what he was going to allow. That's the reason why whatever plot scheme the enemy has, you don't have to be afraid of it because it's in the providence of God. There's nothing the devil can plot, scheme, or do that God don't already know about. That's the reason why you don't have to be angry, upset, mad, bitter about different things that you have to deal with, especially with people, because you don't know that might be a part of the plan. So when you go on your job and that person that might be giving you a fit, you trying to just make money so that you can take care of your house, but there's somebody on your job getting on your nerves, trying to set up a ditch for you, but you got to understand that we serve a God that if you dig one ditch, you better dig two. Hallelujah, because God says, I know what I have in store for you. Watch this. I'm starting to get happy, but I got to slow it down. So this is the thing that, that, that God allows this. He sets this up. God had a time for them to go through their pain, but he had a time for their pain to be healed. He had a time for them to be afflicted, but he has a time for deliverance. He had a time for trouble, but he has a time for you to come up with your hands and lift it and look and give God praise from where he's bringing you from. Good God Almighty. So then watch this. Whenever God is getting ready to deliver, somebody say deliver. God always has a process of deliverance. God works behind the scenes. God knows of how to move in your life when you may be in a place right now where it looked like that God has went to sleep on you. Can I tell you, God does his best work behind the scenes. You don't know that while you're in church listening to me, you may have came here feeling sad, feeling sorry, but if you just start giving God glory, they say, God, I thank you that while I'm in church, you're working it out for me. And not only does God has a plan for you, but he has a plan for your bloodline. Anybody been praying for your children, for your grandchildren, asking God to move in their lives? Anybody been asking for restitution with you and your child somebody say Lord I thank you it's getting ready to happen but watch this he chapter 3 he calls Moses you know Moses y'all don't know the stories so I don't have to go spend a lot of time if you don't you should come down he get delivered you should read that Bible but anyway watch this he has a conversation with Moses he says to Moses he shows up to him I am and reveals to him to get something, gets his attention. The bush is on fire. 
but it's not burning. It's not consumed. He gets his attention. God has ways of getting our attention. Shows up, and the Lord sh speaks to him. Shows up, same angel of the Lord, the theophany of God. God shows up and starts talking to him. And says that I want you to go before Pharaoh. Watch this. Because I have heard the cry of my people. Y'all don't know when they shout. I have heard the cry of my people. He didn't say prayers because they didn't know who to pray to. He says, but I heard your cry. Do you know that God hears you? That your tears has a voice? That when you start crying out to him that your tears can speak for you? And he says, I have heard their cry and Moses, I'm going to use you to deliver my people. Moses come with all of these excuses of how can you use me? First excuse that he has because he had a speech impediment. He says, I don't even have the mouth to use, but God only gave him four words. Y'all get that when you get home. Let my people go. You can study your way through that. Let my people go. He started looking at why he wasn't qualified, but God don't always cause the qualified. He qualifies the one who he calls. And if you know that God is with you, you don't have to worry because God has a way of backing you up. So watch this. This is the year of the mouth, right? So then when you read in Ephesians chapter 4, let's look at this. Read Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 10. Notice what the Lord says to him. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10. Thank you so much. He says, and Moses said, Lord, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither thee for nor since thou have spoken to thy servant, but I'm slow of speech, slow of tongue. And the Lord said, who made man's mouth? I keep saying Ephesians. There's something in Ephesians. Don't pay me no attention. Go back to Exodus. You know where you're supposed to be. Amen. Don't start nothing, big sister. Trying to mess me up. I was joking. <laughs> the book of Exodus chapter 4. Y'all see it now? All right, let's work. And Moses said unto the Lord, O Lord, I am not eloquent, neither therefore hence nor since I have spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Verse number 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Verse number 12. Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach thee what you shall say. So watch this. When it comes to the time that when God wants to bring you into the place of what he has in store for you, you have to work with what God is saying. Jesus said, I do not speak of my own words, but I say what the Father is saying. So that means that if we're going to have spiritual alignment, spiritual breakthroughs, supernatural miracles, that we have to have our ear to his mouth in order to hear what he's saying so that we can speak what thus said the Lord. Watch this. He says, and I will teach you what you shall say. So then here it goes. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. It says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 15, 4 says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You all see that? A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Because God says, I will give you what to say. You can't have a big mouth. Either you're coming out or you're going to stay in where you are. And the only way you can come out is based upon what God tells you to say in order for your deliverance to manifest. So then watch this. If death and life is in the power of the tongue, what are you speaking? Are you speaking death or are you speaking life? We understand that a wholesome tongue is the tree of life. 
So then tongues can bring life to families. Tongues can bring life to careers. Tongues can bring life to hopes. Tongues can bring life to reputations, to missionary efforts, and even Donald Trump to governments. But also not only life, but it can also bring death. It can bring death to families, death to friendship, death to careers, death to hopes, death to understanding, death to reputation, death to missionary efforts, death to governments. So either you're going to speak life or you're going to speak death. And you cannot speak according to your situation. Because if you speak based upon what you see in the natural, then it's going to shape your destiny. But if you speak according to what the Lord is saying, it will change your destination. So then watch this. The Lord spoke and he said to Job, when Job was in his situation waiting for deliverance, he told him in the 22nd chapter, the 28th verse, he says, Thy shall decree and declare a thing. In Job 22, 28, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. He says, Job, yes, you are dealing with this affliction that, yes, I allowed, but the only way you're going to come out, you got to speak your way out. He says, you got to, you see it on the screen? You got to decree and declare things. And you can't just say what you want to happen. You got to say what God is saying to happen. And then watch this. He says in Job chapter 38, verse number 12, Have thy commanded your morning in the days and caused the day to spring forth into its place. He says that this way I'm getting ready to move in your life is voice activated that you got to know that you are commander of what you say and there are many people that will hear this sermon and I'm going to tell you you got to hear me because you can hear what I'm saying now and walk out of those doors and still be negative still be nasty still be mean and it will paralyze your destiny but if you know that I am God's man and I am not speaking of priesthood but it's the God that we serve that's speaking through me then you're going to make up in your mind that I'm speaking life over my life I'm speaking life over my family I'm speaking life over my destiny I'm speaking life over what God has called me to and I want to know are there any prophets in the house a prophet is a person who can decree and declare what the Lord is saying hold on and you got to understand that if you want things to change, you got to decree and declare the word of God. Is there anybody can say, I'm blessed in the city? Y'all ain't talking, y'all don't want it. Come on and shout, I'm blessed in the feet. Come on and shout, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. It sounds so simple, but every demon, every demon, devil heard what you said and if you believe that God is getting ready to bless your life I double dare you to open up your mouth and shout that this is my season of miracles this is my season of breakthrough this is my season that God is turning things around if you believe it come on and give him glory how about I said, give him glory now. I said, give him glory now. Now, guess what? There are some of you in here got to cancel some negative words that you spoke. You spoke that every time you turn around, you keep going through this. If it's not one thing, it's another. I can't never get ahead. It seems like I can't prosper. You got to cancel those words and say, I cancel every negative word that i spoke over my life that i spoke over my children i plead the blood of jesus and i repent right now of every negative word now give god some glory I know that word was a blessing to you. Let my people go as you watched. We were all together in church. Amen. You were able to see the choir and many of those who were in the audience. I know that brought back 
uh, memories when we were in church together. Bless the name of the Lord, and I pray that the message was a blessing to you as well. As I announced that we had a special announcement, many of you already know uh, that the Lord has blessed us and opened up the door uh, for us to be on the Now Network. That's right, the Now Network. Uh, it would show uh, 3 a.m. in here uh, in the United States, 3 a.m., and we chose 3 a.m. simply because uh, during the prime time hour, uh, we would be in the 10 top uh, countries, the top 10 countries, uh, which they would be able to see it in Canada, South Africa, Nigeria, Libya, uh, Marco, Italy, France, uh, many different countries that they will be able to uh, hear the word of God preach. We're grateful and thankful that we are fulfilling the great commission uh, that the Lord said in Mark chapter 16 when he told his disciples, go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel. And we may not be able to physically right now go into all the world and preach the gospel, but we are grateful and thankful for the means of internet, the means of television, uh, that the word of God can be preached. And as a result of preaching online, our Facebook, our YouTube, I believe it was Facebook, uh, grateful and thankful that another television station has reached out to me uh, from uh, New Mexico, uh, the Santa Fe area, and will be coming on July the 18th, uh, the New Mexico, Santa Fe area, uh, which will be July the 18th, Saturday night, 8 o'clock. I'm grateful and thankful for the president of uh, the uh, Alpha Omega Network who reached out to me, saw us uh, preaching the word of God uh, by Facebook and reached out to me. And we're grateful and thankful for the wonderful blessing. Uh, amen. The extended hand of grace uh, that the word of God can be preached to the nations of the world. Uh, we're asking for your support. If you would just go to Easy Tab, there's a new tab that we have. And it says television ministry, television ministry ministry. Uh, if you would be please so $5, $10, $2, whatever you can do, uh, $20, $100, whatever the Lord lay upon your heart, 500, 1,000, whatever it is that God lay upon your heart uh, as to so uh, it says television ministry. If you would just click that tab, uh, those of you who would like to bring your offering to the church, uh, you can just write on the envelope television ministry uh, to help us spread the gospel. It's uh, Pastor C.C. Priest of St. Paul Baptist Church. We are working together to fulfill the great commission. Go ye into all the world by the means of our Facebook. Grateful and thankful for all who tune in to Facebook, YouTube. Uh, bless the name of the Lord and uh, also uh, to our website. I uh, also want to say we're grateful and thankful for the, our Sunday school lesson that was taught uh, by Reverend Virginia White. I know that you were blessed Blessed by that. Amen. May God continue to bless our Sunday school department uh, for the word of God shall continuously uh, be expressed as we learn what thus saith the Lord. At this time, we all want to prepare our hearts for our holy communion as we shall remember what the Lord said in his word. This do in remembrance of me that we are remembering his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and thank God for his resurrection that we should do this until the Lord should come. If you would get your wafer, your bread, your cracker, what you have in your hand, and let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, as we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us to take uh, this holy communion, the Lord's Supper. And we are grateful and thankful that as we come to you, we ask you to forgive us of all of our sins, sins of omission, sins of commission, creating us a clean heart, hallelujah, and renewing us a righteous spirit that we will be worthy to partake in this your supper. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And on that night when Judas would betray Jesus, he took the bread, broke it. Let us all eat in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And after supper, he said he would not drink anymore until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Let us all drink in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless the name of the Lord. Grateful and thankful for taking our holy communion. May God continue to bless you. Grateful and thankful for my wife, I'm Dr. Sarah Priester. We will just get a greeting from her as we prepare to say so long.
Well, I just want to say happy July to all of you. This is our very first Sunday, and I pray that God will carry you through this month, that those things that are on your heart, that you're seeking God for, that you're praying for, and that July will just be a blessing for you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Have a good week and a good month. God bless. God bless you. For tuning in. We trust that your life is transformed by the Word of God. Please tune in next Sunday for worship at 10 a.m. and Wednesday for Bible study at 6.30 p.m. We welcome your generous contributions and they may be given on our website at www.spbcob.org or you can download the Easy Tie Back. We pray that God's favor and protection will overshadow your lives. Until next time, Oh. Uh-huh.